Without the blender, we wouldn't have crushed ice, soups, or smoothies. But blending is more difficult than you might think. It takes serious power to pulverize rock-hard frozen fruit in seconds. 148 super strong components work together. At the heart of this blender sits an 1800 watt motor more powerful than some motorbikes. Inside a toughened plastic jug, a hardened metal drive shaft spins twin steel blades at hurricane speeds to pulverize everything in their path. The key to a good blend begins with the jug you put the food in. So how does its ingenious design help smash pretty much anything you put inside it, from ice and frozen fruit to the toughest nuts? The jug of a blender is cleverer than you might think. Designers have spent years making innovative shapes that actually help blend food better. It all starts here. We produce 435 jars in eight hour shift, 1300 jars a day. Eduardo runs the huge plastic injection molding machine that makes the blender jars at this US factory. First, it heats plastic granules to melting point, 155 degrees Celsius. Then it injects the liquid plastic into a highly polished metal mold. The plastic gets injected right through the center of this side, and it comes out and it just, you know, covers this area. And during that time, the material has the opportunity to, to get hard in there. So when the mold opens, the part is ready, you know, to be taken out. The most important thing about this jug is its shape. It has five sides. One, two, three, four, and this is the fifth side right here. Engineers make the jug shape irregular and put ridges inside to stop a whirlpool from forming. This forces more material down into the blades. It helps stop that vortex and it makes the, the, the food, anything that you're blending, blend better. A clever jug is a good start, but it takes a lot of power to smash through nuts and solid ice. So under the hood sits a seriously souped up electric motor. 68 metal plates welded together wrap around 100 meters of tightly wound copper. These work together to spin the rotor inside at 18,000 times a minute, faster than a jet engine. This drives the blades at a colossal 300 kilometers an hour. It takes a very special drive shaft to channel all that raw power from the motor to the blades. On this machine, we, uh, we run the drive shaft, which connects the blade that's in the jar onto the actual motor of the machine. Ben runs the machines that make the most important metal parts. It takes a, a raw piece of bar stock and it'll go through um, and turn it down to the diameter that we need. They carve the shafts out of toughened stainless steel. So here we have the, the finished product of this machine. This here is the splines and what it does is it connects onto this, this inner spline here and it creates a really tight bond, and that, that gives us the extra strength we need to power our blade at the RPMs that we do. 
The drive shaft passes up through the base of the detachable jug to the blades inside. So how come the jug doesn't spring a leak? Hidden inside, high-speed carbon steel bearings allow the drive shaft to spin at maximum speed. Around a second bearing, special Teflon washers make a low friction seal between the jug and the spinning drive shaft. This means the blender can safely smash through nuts, ice and liquid without spilling a drop. The seal is a precision part, so robots assemble it on a specially designed production line. They first drill a hole in the base of the jug, then fit the bearings and seals. The blade, surprisingly, is completely blunt. With all that power from the motor, the blade doesn't need to slice through food and ice, it simply pulverizes it. On the final assembly line, workers put together the body of the blender by hand. Every fitting must withstand the intense vibrations caused by the motor. Because of the power that goes through it, everything has to be super secure. This highly skilled team assembles a blender body every two minutes. So we put the armature in and then we check the bearings and make sure nothing's clicking. I'm gonna grab a top housing and this is where the electronic board is gonna sit. That's what protects it when it gets closed. There's a lot of vibration, yes, so we wanna make sure that everything stays in place. That holds all the little parts that go onto it, like the coils and stuff, it holds it down. And then it gets passed to the next station. Finally, they give the whole thing a tough plastic housing. That goes around these little legs. And then I'll screw the, the middle housing down. And that's it. This tiny hunk of pure processing power is a miniature hot rod on your worktop. It might not look mighty, but it's one of the most powerful machines in your kitchen.